Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mohammed Zeb, and welcome to the special episode of Career Connect with Kate. Um, so it's it is Career Connect with Kate, but this time I'll be the one hosting this episode. Uh, I'm currently a job seeker. I am a University of Windsor graduate from the Masters of Transportation Engineering program, and I met Kate. I think it's about last year around this time when about regarding a job posting, and since then I've been connected with her. She has been really helpful, um, helping me whether it's just reviewing my resumes, helping us form cover letters, and six months fast forward, she started with the Career Connect initiative. That's uh, something we'll be talking about in detail. And um, in the first pilot episode, she approached uh, me to get um, to get me on board for the episode. As soon as I heard the idea, I was like, okay, that's something I'm really interested in. And I signed up for that idea. And we had the first pilot episode in which, interestingly, Jen was also a part. And uh, Jen is at City of Calgary, and um, she has a good uh, background in the public sector, and she had some good sort of advice in the whole pilot episode. And I, I reached out to her after the episode as well, and she was very helpful. She told me that, yes, if you have anything that I can be of help of, do reach out to me. So uh, with with a brief introduction that I've given into the in the format was that um, Kate is a principal at uh, Alta Planning. Active transportation is something that's Kate's thing, and she's she's really into it. She's something she's so passionate about it, not just as a job, but she's something she's she's passionate about it. And Jen is also the district director of CITE, and that's the Canadian Institution of Transportation Engineers. Jen, since we have Jen over here, and usually the interview goes with uh, Kate hosting it, getting all the job seekers to know the um, professionals, and then it goes on from there. But since I'll be hosting this event, I'll be taking it from the job seekers' perspective of the things that we need to know the most that will really help us in um, whether it's not only job seeking. Once we are in the um, job as well, we still need to keep on networking with professionals all around um, Canada and uh, learn what's new in the industry. So I think so. I'll um, hand this over to Jen. Uh, some questions I think I would have for Jen is, uh, the first one I would like to ask is, um, if uh, Jen, you could let us know what are the different kinds of CIT memberships we have, and um, if you could just uh, give us a brief, um, anything that would help our viewers over there. For sure. Thanks, Mohammed, and thanks for hosting uh, Kate and I today. Um, yeah, it was a delight to be on the first one with you. Um, so in terms of ITE membership, um, I think you might have been an, a student member, hopefully. I know Windsor just created a student chapter, which is very exciting. Um, so there's definitely student member um, memberships. And then we have a reduced structure called 30 under 30. So um, to really make it easier for new grads to, to remain, remain ITE members. Um, and so once you become an ITE member, you're automatically assigned to a district so depending where you live um, if you're living in Canada you'll be part of the Canadian district and then then you'll also become a, a member of the section for where you live and we've got I think 13 sections across Canada and they're all different but they're all um, doing really well uh, so you can the nice thing about becoming a member is that you are automatically a member of different communities and so there's different ways to be involved I see that's that's really helpful and yes I am a student member now I think so a question that would follow on would be that um, what are the perks or what are the things that are offered with these memberships whether it's a student member and what's the difference if you're a professional member and even if you have these districts even if your schools uh, participating in uh, setting up these uh, boards how would that be helpful and what opportunities do they offer as for their memberships please yeah, so thanks for that. I think um, there's lots of benefits to being a student member. We, as an organization, ITE and CITE, we work really hard um, and we're always open to new ideas to make students um, feel um, like they, like transportation is a great career and that um, we know that as an industry it's changing all the time and so by embracing students we're evolving faster as a profession and better as a profession so students we really acknowledge are the key to our success as are, as are our young um, early professionals as well you guys are the ones with the ideas the energy um, and so uh, don't think that you shouldn't get involved in a really um, meaningful way because because you should you should be at the table um, and and really feel confident that you're welcome there 
Um, so that might be attending the council, the technical council meetings this year. It will be easy to participate. They're normally in Washington, D.C. Uh, in January and then again in the summer. But this year um, with it, you know, the world going virtual, it's a really great opportunity to be involved in, in like, and there's so many technical projects. Um, it's also, I think, great just to be a member to start building your professional networks. I know I started with ITE. I was told I was going to be the first president of the Manitoba student chapter. And um, sometimes you've got to learn to just go with the flow and try something new. I think that's a really important skill for anybody in transportation is, is to take a risk um, and um, sign up for an opportunity. Um, and also just to have a network. Um, I've been able to work to um, be part of a couple of sections and now serve at the district, so at the Canadian, the national level, and having a network where you can phone someone up in, in a city um, in a different part of Canada and say, you know what, I heard that that was working in the city of London or Toronto, can you tell me how you did it? Um, but it's so rewarding to be able to bring a new idea to your own city um, or to a project you're working on, and so I think having a network through ITE has is, um, I can't think of a better way um, to help me be successful in my career. That was really helpful, Jen. I'm sure most of the students listening to this would understand that networking is the key word over here to understand that how essential it is and how CIT helps you network out there and uh, it puts you it puts you in in a good in good position to get in connect with these persons and I think so one of those initiatives of student uh, with networking was something that was started with Kate was the career connect with um, connect connect with Kate initiative that was basically how uh, as I introduced in the start of this um, episode so I would like to hand this over to Kate right now and ask her a question um, if um, if you could please uh, let us know Kate more about the career connect uh, initiative to people who do not know or even to people who know more about it how can we actually utilize this opportunity to gain the best out of it and as job seekers and what's what's the best thing we should be looking in for these episodes and how how like how what's the best thing to take off these episodes please yeah so thank you um, I mean, it started with first just reading resumes. I, when, when COVID hit and the market got so hard, it was, I'll just, I'll read resumes. So I started that in the spring. And I noticed people needed a little more help with two things. Understanding what a, a tra typical transportation job is like. Not that we know the answer, but just stories that relate to that. And then second, virtual networking. Like you and I met. And I just, you had no events to go to to shake someone's hand, meet you, see that, you know, your interest, your enthusiasm, and help you. So I thought, okay, well, we need virtual. So uh, Career Connect is three job seekers, three people who are currently employed, uh, and a conversation. So it's like a forced, pretending you met at a conference, but a, a little more fun. I remember when you and I were brainstorming this, it was like a dinner with strangers minus the food. Meaning like it's meant to be ca casual to the sense that you could have a conversation, not an interview. When Jen and I were brainstorming, it's also not meant to be so intimidating that it scares a new hire. Because I have to remember that it, you know, this is a big deal to be reaching out and putting your name out there. So honestly, we're on episode seven. It's been also fun. It, it's been positive, like it's a celebration of our profession in a way. Um, and I, I do hope it makes a difference, but it does. So where you're going with your opening too is how to take the, make the most out of it. So I'll answer that part too. I mean, someone has to come to the episode with their story because they're supposed to tell a story of uh, transportation in their lives. And some people might not ha immediately know what they're going to share, but you're supposed to give a sense of yourself to the people that you're meeting. Uh, and then just openly participate. And sometimes that's having the courage to speak up in the episode and just ask a question because the group is not going to, it's not a test. They're not going to jump on you. So that's the first part is the participation. Then the second part, I guess, is what you do afterwards. So when we were talking about this little mini episode, it's a bit about tips. So one thing I'll say is just connecting on LinkedIn afterwards isn't enough a connection request. 
I hope, I hope people use it to say, I learned something about you. So I'll use that in a message to somebody to maybe spark a follow up. So it can be in your own episode or another one. But honestly, Mohammed, I hope that you've now met someone at Stantec, someone at Morris and Hirschfield, someone at WSP, I could name a, a ton of companies and cities so that you're not only dealing with HR email addresses. And then I'm hoping we're inspiring some confidence. Um, and I just, I hope it's something, something positive. Uh, and honestly, it's bringing me a lot of joy. I've met a ton of really wonderful people. And every episode I leave ele elevated, like happy of people that I'm meeting. But I, I get that it's hard because I mean, I'm coming from a place of being currently employed and it's hard right now and it's hard for people to break through. And that's that part about barriers, right? To employment, that the question I get 90% of the time is the Canadian experience one or just how to get noticed. So I'm, I'm trying to give that way but I'll pass it back to you to see if you have any, anything of your advice. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. Yes, that um, the whole initiative, your whole idea of coming up um, with this idea to basically connect job seekers with professionals, help them in this, in this whole pandemic issue with this virtual networking event. I think so that's the main key to take away is that Networking is not something that's uh, that's just sending cold emails or maybe cold requests without a message or just randomly connecting with people or reaching out without without a set um, uh, background. Um, as a job seeker, that's what I usually do is, um, apart from whatever uh, suggestion you said of how um, Career Connect could help. What I usually do is if you're connecting with someone from the, um, let's say the organization you wanna work for with some job posting they have on hold, it's it's never like, this is a job I'm applying for, can you please refer me? It's something you go, you go on something that interests you with that, like let's say if someone was to approach you or uh, someone who's interested in active transportation and you see that's something of your passion as well, you reach out to them of an interesting topic that you feel would uh, raise some an interesting conversation or would make them know, okay, this is something they're passionate about. And if I have something that's of a similar, that needs a similar uh, background, you would, of course, you would, you would reach out to them again. So it's, it's more about reaching out to them in a particular manner that feel, that makes them feel comfortable. And it's never just sending cold messages. And um, apart from that, I feel is uh, actually having a very, good, well-formatted resume and having that reviewed by professionals in the field. That's that's what I try to do with uh, my resume. I think so. I was lucky to have um, you on board when you actually reviewed my resume and my cover letter. And I think so that's something that would help job seekers to keep in mind um, whenever they are applying for jobs and whether networking. Yeah. And, and I hope people go back and go back through the episodes because good resume tips, good cover letter, uh, is something that comes up every time, how to get noticed, um, how to get someone to respond if you re reach out. Because I get the variety of ways people reach out. Sometimes I get, hi, how, how are you? I, I don't know how to respond to that. Other times people say, I'm an avid cyclist. That's a famous one. I don't know what to say to that. Uh, great, like I'm glad you like biking. That doesn't mean that you have a technical skill and that's what I remember about you is you wrote about, uh, I believe, pedestrians in your first cover letter. And that was enough to say, OK, right, instead of just a broad, I like transportation because you're trying to give someone like something about you or we want to know what your interest is. So, yeah, this is that's the hope of the episodes is to help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jen, I would like to throw the last question to you. Um, it's basically we uh, discussed about the student memberships, how this, uh, how the CIT membership for students is going to help them. Uh, I know that uh, see, uh, the student membership is at a discounted rate and people, job seekers would usually go for this membership knowing that they would get the chance to network. But once they land a job, once they are in the, uh, they're working, um, how would they transition into the profession membership and like what's the key points that would hold them back and would still give them, uh, they would still see the perks in that. And uh, what do you think uh, are the key points over here? If you could please answer that. Sure. So I think it's really important. Um, and CITE, CITE makes it pretty affordable. Um, 
young members in their early 20s, you know, it's $30, $60. Um, so that'll be, first of all, um, more than offset if you attend the conferences. Um, and there's lots of other ways that you're discounted. Um, but I think, you know, if you're as old as me or even older, our members would all say, you know, this is where we built our networks. And um, this is, I think your networks is where you can get your energy from, you can get your ideas, um, you can get really great opportunities. So I think, um, you know, $30, $60 is, is a pretty small amount when it can um, give you so much. Yeah, so I'm going to add to it too, but I find it funny. It's like the Ottawa four o'clock uh, setting sun has hit my open concept office, hence the amazing shadow pattern. But I'm going to keep going here. A couple more things. Local chapters, right? So uh, I'll speak to my Ottawa city, national capital. Uh, they've come out with um, Ask Me Anything virtual networking which is a lovely local thing. So there's that element too of how to get the most from your membership is your local chapter. And then right before this taping, I was talking to an ITE member, Russell Brownlee, and he gave a tip. So I'm going to say it. He said his best thing was the ITE, I have it written down, technical council with ITE International. He joined a traffic engineering group and he met so many people and did so much interesting research early on, which expanded his network. So that builds on Jen's point. So I wanted to share that straight from another member as a tip. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Kate. I think so, yes, uh, Russell's tip was really helpful. That's, that's, that's the best uh, conclusion to this uh, episode. So um, I would like to thank both of you for joining me for this episode. And I'm sure that most of the job seekers and professionals will benefit from this episode. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to uh, shoot uh, Kate an email or you can even reach to me via LinkedIn. And I think so. That's it for this episode. Please join us next time. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.